Hey guys, welcome to this video. If you're new here, we're Americans. In 2021, we moved from the USA to Germany where we had three beautiful years there and now we've recently moved to Japan. Today's video is all about the culture shocks that we're experiencing here in this new country. We're gonna be talking about driving, traffic, language, things being kid-friendly, the people here, how things are oddly very quiet, and also how some places are super overstimulating. So we're gonna be talking about it all and we're excited for you to learn and be with us on the journey. What are you doing, baby? And Willa was outside. Do you like looking back at too many pictures? <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Yeah. Good morning from Japan, you guys. Right now, Willa woke up. No, I woke up. And... We were just taking some time to look back at some pictures. Her little German friend, uh, me and her mom communicate, and they send us updates once in a while. So it was that time again to show her some new photos from Germany, and today she said that she really, really misses her friends, but she has the biggest smile when she sees her pictures. It's these moments, you guys. It's these moments that are really difficult. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Our experience, honestly, you guys, has went better than I could have ever expected. We're really happy. Um, uh, yes, of course we miss Germany. Like we will never, ever, ever forget Germany. Our memories there, the people, we're trying to maintain the relationships with individuals there. We just have all but happy thoughts. Oh, we just love Germany and we'll be back sometime. For now, we're trying to really embrace our new life and like I was saying, I've been just so happy with how the transition's been, especially for Willa. She's just a little happy girl here. But like I said, these moments, sometimes they do put a little doubt and question into my mind because we're still looking for school for Willa and there's a lot to do to transition over here. <laughs> Noah! <laughs> Anyways, just thought I'd give an update that that's the reality of doing this expat thing. That's the reality of moving with littles. It's much harder doing it with kids but it's also super fun to do it with them. So we're learning both. <laughs> we're gonna go now, cause she's trying to get the camera. Hi. <laughs> How's Japan going? Thumbs up, baby. You like it here, bud? No, I have to put her thumbs up. Noah says she does, huh? You sunglasses? <laughs> she's like, what in the world? <laughs> well, despite the train going that way, I'm determined we're going to see if we can make it all the way up here. It's a good workout. Right here, we've made it to Kurihama Flower Park, and we're gonna be going to see the Godzilla slide, just kind of explore um, another local place to see here, and the dinosaur, the Godzilla, huh? So, we're on our way up, just like the first 100 meters up here. There's a bunch of white felt or fabric that's over the flower beds, so I imagine that's to try and keep like the bulbs or any of the flowers that are started to grow from freezing. <laughs> there are a lot of places for the flowers to be. I'm feeling the burn right now. Come here, baby girl. Whoa, look at this one. All right, so we're gonna be talking about some of the culture shocks that we've been experiencing here in Japan. And honestly, the first one is this, this morning. Like, why is someone gonna be fishing next to these giant power lines? Like, I have no idea why someone would be fishing or casting up here. Like, we're several hundred feet above the sea, far away from any water or rivers. Maybe it's just like a standard one that they put out here. But we saw it walking up here and I had to laugh and pointed out that it makes sense, don't fly a kite right next to them. But like, fishing, like casting? 
maybe people practice on dry land. I don't know. Honestly, it's really fun coming to just like a very local park here. Of course, the Godzilla is like a fun slide. Like, what a fun creative idea to have this themed park um, after Godzilla. Uh, but like, just this morning, it's all just other Japanese families with their kids just enjoying um, a rather brisk morning here. I think that's one of the culture shocks that we did experience the first few weeks being here, is just noticing that the playgrounds were kind of lackluster in comparison to the ones in Europe, especially in Germany. I remember so many playgrounds looking at that and saying like, wow, like, this city has thrown in hundreds and thousands of dollars to put together this really well thought out and constructed playground. And then you come here and a lot of times it's just like that little small rock that they have for like the surface. And then maybe, maybe like a little um, a spring horse or spring animal or something and just like very small play sets, which is fine, especially for like the younger kids and stuff, but definitely a big shock as far as coming to what we were used to. Seeing this park up here, honestly, it's fun on a slant, lots of slides, lots of like uh, challenging obstacles, which is really good to see. Willa is loving it and uh, Noah is not far behind. One of the culture shocks that took both Rissa and I by surprise was something we probably never would have even thought of, although it's not really that like foreign of an idea, and it makes a lot of sense, is having people whose their full-time job is to wave a little light stick or baton and direct traffic from going in or out of parking lots onto busy roads. This is something that we've seen quite a bit at any store that's on like a busier road, especially around like Yokosuka, and then like we've seen it at Ikea, we've seen it at several other stores. There are people who are dressed up in like rain gear, reflective vests, and they have like the little light sticks, and they are like telling the people when they can exit out onto the main road. And it makes sense, it really does, especially where it's not like at a stoplight and there's a lot of traffic, but it definitely shows the thought process and the extra precaution that goes into transportation here in Japan. We know that transportation safety here in Japan is extremely, extremely high and is regarded as one of the best in the world, if not the best as far as transportation safety. So even though the roads, people are only going 40 to 50 kilometers an hour passing, that they would still have someone there to make sure that they can get onto the road safely and avoid a collision. Another unexpected culture shock is that I'm actually not sitting on a bench that's meant to be just like a bench. It is doubles as a, like a back stretcher and stuff. And then there's a bench over here and a bench over there, one for sit-ups and one for like dips. Anyway, beside that point, the next one we wanted to talk about is just how quiet everything is, okay? Now many of you guys know Japanese are very respectful and very polite when it comes to others like space and their experiences and this was very apparent the first time we were on public transportation like you get on the train and it was just so quiet like unbelievably quiet people are on the phone they're not blaring music when they do have their conversations they just keep them quietly and close with each other uh, which makes honestly for a really good experience but that also goes for like neighborhoods several of the houses that we were touring and even our own neighborhood there's not like a lot of loud stuff going on of course there's like cars passing if you are on a busy road but even then, it's still really quiet. I'm pretty sure that like the sirens on fire trucks and ambulances are like nowhere to the same level. At least it seems like it's not. I would have to research that one, but it seems quite quiet. The next culture shock that shouldn't surprise anybody who has visited Japan or even thinks about going to Japan would be the language. So this is something that we totally expected to have here. We'd heard from many people, and I think it's just becoming more apparent as we're exploring, we're going to restaurants, we're going to hotels, and we're starting to see more of the common habits when we ask if someone speaks English um, or we try to speak with them. And a lot of it has to do with how comfortable they are, I think, with speaking the language. I don't blame them. It was the same with German for me, although I tried as much as I could. And even right now with Japanese, I'm still trying to use what words and phrases I know. But it can be a little intimidating and maybe even a little embarrassing to not be fluent or even to fully understand or fully say something right. So I'm gathering that more people do know how to speak English, or at least they know a little bit from schooling but they're just more intimidated or embarrassed to try and speak, so they will say no. We just went to a bike store yesterday to look at getting one of those mamacharis, uh, the bikes that have the kids in the back and the basket in the front, and it was kind of difficult because we had to use Google Translate the whole time. Language definitely has been more difficult here than it was in Germany. And with that, characters. Seeing the Japanese characters, katakana, hiragana, and kanji has been really difficult. I've learned some, but like you still have to learn the characters, and then you have to know like the sounds, and then put them all together, and that means a word. It's not that they have a certain meaning, each of the characters and the sounds, and that even especially goes for kanji or the Chinese characters. So it can get really confusing even when we're just trying to look at something. It's harder 
than ever to try and piece together what it says. That being said, there's a lot of the Roman alphabet that's posted on like road signs, street signs, restaurant signs, etc. that does make it quite easy and convenient to recognize where things are. So it's not like we're going out completely blind, aimless, have nowhere to go, have to translate everything but it definitely is more difficult. My brain is still trying to learn and put together all of the characters and then try to make sense of them. I'm still definitely trying to learn Japanese a little bit every day and Will is definitely showing an interest. It's really fun for her to try and practice drawing the characters, saying the syllables, and uh, learning little phrases here and there. Time will tell, but I already know that it's not going to be the same where I felt quite comfortable speaking to people, asking questions in Germany. It's taking a lot longer here, um, as was expected. Next, talking about driving. Now, before we came to Japan, we were thinking that everybody was going to be traveling on trains and public transportation. Of course, we know that there was cars, right? We had a Subaru before. I've had a Toyota before. I knew that there are a lot of great Japanese vehicles that are made here. So, of course, there are going to be lots of great Japanese vehicles here, but I don't think I realized how many there would be compared to the public transportation system that is like world renowned, right? I guess I was expecting it to be a lot more of that public transportation, but even like in New York and cities where there are a lot of people who don't have vehicles, there's still a lot of cars, right? I guess it's just that first impression that you have and then you get here and you see how many people drive. But we were quite surprised when we got here. We were looking for vehicles and just how many vehicles are available and how many vehicles go to like these car auctions every week. Tens and hundreds of thousands that come in every week and month to get auctioned off and as they're getting like new vehicles. Um, it's quite surprising honestly. And with that being said, we have been really surprised to hear how many people, like fellow Americans, and then even hearing about other Japanese, who they will drive into like Yokohama and Tokyo with their cars rather than taking public transportation. For us, that was a bit of a culture shock because we just assumed we are never going to be driving into Tokyo. We'll just hop on the train and go because I don't want to drive into Tokyo. But we had someone tell us that they had bought a certain vehicle because they wanted it to be small enough so they could drive into Tokyo. And they said that they loved driving into Tokyo and that it was really nice to find parking spots with a small vehicle. And that was just really hard for me to like, I guess, understand, maybe comprehend. I just assumed that parking was extremely difficult to find and that driving would just be like, I wouldn't want to do it. And I mean, I've driven in some bigger cities around Europe and in the States, but like nothing compared to like what Tokyo is. So I guess I just had never had imagined doing that, but apparently that's a thing, which we haven't experienced that quite yet. Um, so to be determined and how we like feel about that and if we do end up driving in there, but really kind of surprising that people were driving into the huge Tokyo metropolis rather than just taking public transportation. Here she goes. Yay! That tickled, that tickled my tummy. Does that tickle your tummy? So I'm walking down to find a place to sit and chat with you guys. I'm still in shock that we live so close to the coast. So wild to me. I'm not used to that. This is the first time we've really ever lived close to the ocean, except for one short summer for just a couple months in California, which we loved. So fun to like have this experience and maybe we will become coastal people. Okay, funny. Of course, after walking to try and find a spot, the best place was where Tanner was. We have to be honest, you guys, we are really loving Japan. And that's a good thing. That's what we hoped for, we wanted. We wouldn't say it has come necessarily easy. As you guys have seen some of it and you will see soon, this house hunting journey has been quite the process. And not only that, but choosing a school for Willa has also come with its challenges. We literally have toured every international school in the area. We've also went to multiple different Japanese schools. I'm not exactly sure how much we will share of that experience. Are you guys interested? Let us know in the comments if you are. But we've now finally found one and that feels really good and soon we think we're gonna make a decision about the house so progress is being made we can now just start to enjoy this is like a fun day for us to be able to be out here enjoy just some of our local area be out more in nature and just have fun with our girls like Will is absolutely having a blast and it's fun for us to see that was actually one of our concerns with moving here was not having adequate playgrounds and green space and although I have to be honest and say it's not you know up to German standards I mean this park itself is awesome. Speaking of playgrounds and kids, I want to say that I feel like a lot of Japanese people in general just have a concern for children here. Like I knew before coming that Japanese children at a young age are riding on the trains by themselves, they're walking in the streets by themselves, they're very independent, very you know smart, capable children. They are everywhere but I feel like here the parents are just allowing them to do that and it's more of like the community that's keeping their watch on these children. 
and we came from a small town in Germany, so maybe that's why it's so much of a shock. I'm always surprised when I see it, and I have to ask myself, like, will I allow Willa to do that? Soon she's going to be going to school, she's going to be riding a bus, like, obviously there's just that part of, like, me as a mother, like, reminding myself, Willa's growing up, she's not a baby, she's capable, give her the responsibility and trust that, you know? But also like I want her to be safe and come home in like one piece. But again, there's such like a community focus on the kids here. And I noticed that the moment I came off from the plane. People with kids tend to be like just well taken care of, I guess. My expectations have been surpassed. Anyways, I want to talk about some other culture shocks. So Tanner told me he mentioned how quiet it's been. And that's been really nice and pleasant. But I do have to say there are some stores that we've run into that are like sensory overload. If you guys watched our second video ever here in Japan we went into a store that was just like wow it was a lot to be honest there was music playing there was strong scents like perfume scents there was like lights kind of going off like blinking noises flashing lights stuff from like head to toe it was a lot to take in we've also noticed that there's a similar experience not quite as intense but a lot going on in the electronic stores so i think it's a lot to do with like the marketing and the signs and you can kind of tell like that's like more of their normal and maybe it's more catchy for them and it's like better marketing and they get more sales when it's kind of busy like that but for me it's like a little overstimulating, and i'm like wow like there's so many signs also when it comes to food which we I've also absolutely loved here in Japan. It's been so fun to explore and if you hadn't seen our Japanese food video be sure to watch that one. This was our first like experience taste testing a few different types of foods here in Japan and since then we've just been like devouring so much and we'll be sharing more of our experiences with you. Talking about Japanese food, I've been very surprised at how much meat Japanese people have been consuming. And when I mean meat, I mean more like beef and pork. We knew seafood was huge and very popular here, but I guess I didn't really understand how much beef and pork and even chicken was consumed here. Um, that's probably just because of like the barbecue, the Japanese barbecue here that we have. I'm not gonna lie, it is super delicious and the Wagyu beef here is like amazing quality. It's like thin strips so it's not like a huge thick you know, a slice and thick piece. You pay extra at most places to get the high quality beef. And it's good. But again, I was just surprised even in the stores, like there's quite a large selection of beef available. So this is Willis timer. Five minutes for 300 yen. Oh, my baby. What is this? This is lavender vanilla oh. mix. I only got the lavender for you, Riss. I hope you know that because I don't like lavender that much. But it was mixed, so I get to have the vanilla side, okay? And you know Willa will love the purple, huh? Do you want to try it? <laughs> I feel so bad because my child, my little nose is in the background just wanting it. She's too little. This is good. Unique. I'm surprised that there's lavender here. I guess it makes sense with the flowers that will be in bloom soon. Man, having two kids, you get something and then you hardly have it. So Tanner was put in charge of lunch today and this is where we ended up sitting basically on a corner in a restaurant where you order at a like, vending machine and we got ourselves some ramen. It looks like Tanner has the egg flavored ramen. I think is how people translate it. And then gyoza, which is becoming a favorite of ours. <laughs> this is so cute. Hey, watch, watch me, so. Went from seeing the view of it from the Godzilla Park to now standing right here by the ocean. Still a shock that we live <laughs> <laughs> so close, but it's relaxing and calming. 
Well, there you go. That's it for this video, you guys. Appreciate the support and all of the new faces. It's fun to see people from different backgrounds, especially those who have lived in Japan, which we're coming to find out is a lot of people. So thanks for joining us. We hope that you continue subscribing and following our channel. Also, don't forget to check out our Patreon page. We love the support and it does help us create these videos and content because it does take a lot of time. So if you want to support us, you can go ahead and join there for just a little bit every month. Plus, you're going to get some special content that we don't post here on the YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to continue following along our adventures here in Japan.